Morning everyone! Welcome to my full bookshelf and welcome to the 9th of October 2021, which means it's bookshelf day! And to celebrate, I thought this year, since, I mean, obviously the pandemic is still raging on, but I'm double jabbed and I've just done also a lateral flow test to be extra safe, I'm going to be doing a little bookshop crawl. Little because it's literally four shops that I have planned to visit. Um, but nevertheless, we're going to see some bookshop, we're going to buy some books and I'll take you along because I love watching this kind of videos and I hope you'll enjoy this one too. I've decided to go to four bookshops that are within walking slash bus distance from where I live and just enjoy those. I do have to say some of them are some of my favourite bookshops in London so I'm very lucky but yeah so first things first just did a lateral flow test which I need to register just to be extra safe. A little outfit of the day because why not so I've got my little Chelsea boots from I think these are from Clark's a few years ago they served me really well I had them resold twice and I think I need to do it a third time. Uh, then my dress. Oh, <laughs> that's my dog. Yes. Hi, doggy. Um, then my dress is from Fat Face. And then my coat, the rain coat from Uniqlo. Um, this is from this year. The dress is from this year's Fat Face, but I bought it on the sale, in the sale. And then this is from a couple of years ago from Uniqlo, and I also got this in the sale. And then I got my little New Yorker bag. So yeah, ready to go. Tell me if this doesn't scream autumn to you. It's so beautiful and red. Gorgeous. So, I'm still trying to figure out this whole vlogging in public situation. So, uh, there were some people walking behind me and it really slowed down and tried to let them go past so they wouldn't notice. But anyway, I'm heading to Dulwich Village to Village Books and that's going to be our first stop. Now there would be a much faster way to get there from my place but I really wanted to walk through Dutch Park which you'll see is really gorgeous and then stop at Gales Bakery because there is one on the way so we're gonna have a little pit stop before going to the bookshop. I feel self-conscious about vlogging in public, but I'm trying to push myself to do it. Oh my god, the cutest little dog in a bike carrier has gone past. But anyway, well, but I've decided that I'm going to go straight to the bookshop, buy a book, and then sit at Gales instead of having takeaway. So I can, you know, have a little sit and read kind of session. I also don't have my mic, um, so I don't know whether you can hear me. Oh my god. Can you the line? That's where the line starts and Gales isn't... That's mental. Okay, bookshop first it is. Never wanna see you cry Girl, you need to know Life 
sometimes that we fight At least we're sitting side by side I'm trying to prop you on, on a plant. <laughs> Hopefully you don't fall. If you fall, it's all my fault. Um, but I bought the Song of Achilles. Now, there were so many books in there and so many signed editions and I generally had to resist getting the Daily Marissa's manifesto. But I thought I would start with something that uh, is at the top of my TPR. I really want to read this book. Uh, I want to give Madeline Miller a second chance because as you know, I didn't particularly enjoy Cersei. I've heard a lot of beautiful things about this book and I think it's also a queer story which I'm kind of looking forward to reading about. Um, the cover is stunning. I thought it had a different cover with a helmet or something but I think it recently changed it. But oh there's a bag going past and a second one. But yeah, so book number one in the bag quite literally. So I didn't end up getting a little hot chocolate because they make one of the best hot chocolates and then I managed to get the very last sausage roll and the thing about their sausage rolls is that I never tried them until last weekend and then Andrew had one and I had a bite and then I wanted one so today I treated myself to one I mean I say it now if you're vegetarian look away but this sausage roll it's a whole different thing it's the best brunch and I'm having a little Sneak read of the Song of Achilles. Can't wait. I had to leave the park because otherwise I would not get anything done. But I'm heading back to Dalich Library and I think I'll catch the bus and we'll go to the next bookshop. But I also want to stop by the shelter charity shop and the, what's it called? The Cancer Research Charity Shop. Is it? Or St. Christopher's Hospice actually. Um, because I think they have some nice clothes and I do need some winter clothes.
them too shy to actually film on the main road. Um, but I'm still in East Dulwich. I'm still in one of the little streets of Lodge Lane and there is another bookshop called Ride Books and I'm going to go check it out now. I've been trying to wait for people to go past and then I think now I have a window of empty street. Uh, this is a book I got from Ride Books. I'm just in the same side road I was in before. Uh, but this is Amant in Siena by Hisham Mata and it's a non-fiction book about his journey back to Siena. Right, I really am trying my best to be more at ease with the camera when I'm walking and I'm around and people could potentially see me. But I do have to say I'm still very self-conscious and I try to make it look like I'm maybe on a phone call or something like that but obviously very hard to disguise a camera I have removed the external mic so that it doesn't look as bulky oh, can't go enough doesn't look as bulky but still it just makes me feel a little bit, I don't know, self-conscious but then again I love watching people that do this kind of stuff so I wouldn't, I, I don't judge people when they do it so I do wonder whether people are judging me because I know like it's very easy to judge the weird person talking to a camera and um, I also don't want to seem really self-involved um, but I guess after a degree you have to be if you are comfortable seeing yourself on screen I think it's more the act of filming myself in public that is what bothers me but anyway it's been so far a very successful trip and um, I had to refrain myself from buying more than one book in each shop because obviously my TBR cannot get too much longer than it actually is um, but I'm really looking forward to going back home for a little bit taking a little bit of a break maybe starting this edit and then head out again for the final bookshop in this tiny Southeast London bookshop crawl back in this room uh, not for long can I prop you here I do wonder whether um anyway so back home but not for long um I just had a bit of a chill session for the past couple of hours well more like three hours actually and now I'm heading out I've actually uh, enlisted my brother to come with me because he's come for a quick visit uh, so we're taking Poppy and my brother to the bookshop which is my local bookshop Scaredale Books um, if you don't follow them on Twitter, you should because they have, first of all, incredible music recommendations but also whoever curates the uh, Twitter page is quite hilarious and heading there, I can't wait to see uh, what they have in store because it's their 55th birthday as well so um, apparently there's an event going on as well that's why I wanted to wait uh, to go to the bookshop until now so let's head off Hello, pumpkin.
Well, here we are again. It's the end of this vlog. I wanted to show you what I got. So I just start with the first book. I got The Song of Achilles from Village Book Village Books in Dalish Village. And let me just read the blurb for you in case you haven't heard about this book. I think I'm probably the last person on earth to pick it up, but you know. Greece in the age of heroes. Awkward young prince Patroclus has been exiled to the court of King Peleus. Despite their differences, Peleus' golden boy Achilles befriends the shamed prince. As they grow into young men, their bond blossoms into something deeper, despite the displeasure of Achilles' mother, the sea goddess Thetis. But when the word comes that when her huh? But when word comes that Helen of Sparta has been kidnapped, Achilles must go to war in distant Troy and fulfil his destiny. Torn between love and fear for his friend, Patroclus goes with him. So that's the Song of Achilles and I think, as I mentioned before, um, this also has some sort of LGBT friendly storyline. I'm not sure what happens. I can imagine potentially Achilles and Patroclus fall in love or start a relationship of some sort, um, but that's uh, the Song of Achilles. Then I bought Laura El Lauren Elkin number 9192 notes on a Parisian commute. Um, I had seen this book a while ago at the very same bookshop where I bought it and I said I was not going to buy it, I was going to hold off until this day so that I could treat myself to it. Um, the premise that I liked about this book is that these are notes, literal notes, written on the iPhone of the author. And Remily, let me read the blurb for you. The author of Flan Flaneuse, Women Talk in a City, joins the commuter crowds on the bus with this love letter to Paris written on iPhone notes. Donna Elkin chronicles life in transit. From musings on Virginia Woolf and George Perrick to her first impressions in the aftermath of 2015 terrorist attacks, her diary queries the lines between togetherness and being apart, between the everyday and the eventful, as she registers the ordinary makings of a city and its people. So this probably reads as some sort of love letter to Paris, as the blurb said. Um, but yeah, I'm really much looking forward to it. I, I thought the concept was really special. A Month in Siena by Hisham Mata. Mata. Um, apologies if I'm mispronouncing the surname or the name. Um, and this book is non-fiction and the blurb says, Mata was 19 years old when his father was kidnapped. In the year following, he found himself turning to art, particularly the great paintings of the Sine School. They became a refuge and a way to think about the world outside the urgencies of the present. A quarter of a century later, having found no trace of his father, Matar finally visits the birthplace of those paintings. A month in Siena is the encounter between the writer and the city. It is an immersion in painting, a consideration of love, grief and a profoundly moving contemplation of the relationship between art and life. And this one also has, I believe, some, yeah, it has some beautiful illustrations inside. And as somebody who has been to Siena and has obviously studied history of art in school, I am very much looking forward to it, but it, it sounds like an extremely interesting read. And finally, this is another book that I was eyeing for quite some time. Um, just bumped into it in a shop one day and then I saved it as, you know, books I want to get at some point uh, is Three Summers by Margarita Liberaki, uh, who is a um, Greek author I believe and I don't really know much about this I think I, I've read the blurb once and that was enough to spell me in that so Three Summers is a warm and tender tale of three sisters growing up in the countryside near Athens before the Second World War oh yeah this is where the book got me the first sentence so we have Athens which I love I've been there absolutely love that place and then we have Second World War which as you know if you follow this channel I absolutely love some historical fiction and especially historical fiction set during the Second World War and then obviously you know sisterhood and female relationships so thumbs up for me. Anyway, Three Summers is a warm and tender tale of three sisters growing up in the countryside near Athens before the Second World War, living in a ramshackle old house with their divorced mother, a filtratious, hot-headed Maria, beautiful but distant Infanta, and dreamy and rebellious Caterina. Through, the, through his eyes, the story is mostly observed. Over three summers, the girls share and keep secrets, fall in and out of love, try to understand the strange ways of adults and decide what kind of women they hope to become. 
So this this sounds like a, very much like a coming of age sort of novel. I could be completely wrong, but I'm extremely excited to read all of this. Um, I think I start this vlog saying I'm going to buy the Song of Achilles because it's the one I want to read the most. But the more I look at three summers and the more I want to get stuck into this, and I feel like I don't know all four of them. I'm beyond excited to get stuck into this. But before I go. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. But before I go, I want to have a little side note to say I am beyond grateful to be able to go to bookshops in person this year. I know that, you know, the pandemic has been quite divisive in terms of in terms of how people react to the news and how people reacted to the vaccine and all that. But personally, I'm somebody who had two jabs and I had the first jab when I was 36 weeks pregnant, I think and the other one while well, I was still breastfeeding my baby. I'm glad I had the opportunity to get a jab and I'm glad that thanks to the jab I'm still here. I am hoping that the world slowly goes back to normal, even though normal, I don't know whether it still means something or not, but this has given me hope because I remember last year being in a state of sort of suspended reality where nobody expected a pandemic to last that long and I obviously didn't do anything for bookshop day because I was at home and uh, sort of basically shielding hiding from the word I hadn't found out that I was pregnant yet but I thought I might be and yeah now it's a whole year later I'm a mum I'm glad I'm able to afford books and one thing that I want to say is that I very rarely buy books that are new. I tend to find them second hand, I tend to find them from street libraries, um, I tend to find them as uh, ebooks and all that because, you know, books are beautiful but the key thing is not the hardback that you hold in your hand, it's the, the ability to get lost in a word that is different. So if you watch this video and right at this stage you are at a point where you cannot afford to buy the shiny beautiful new book, I have been there. And I'm there most of the time. I don't want to spend that much money on a new book most of the time. Sometimes I really do. But don't think that what you see online is the whole truth. Uh, don't think that all the booktubers and, you know, bookstagrammers and all that have it all figured out in terms of getting all those hardbacks and the beautiful bookshelves and all that. It's nice to be able to trick yourself every now and again, but it's not real life, or at least it's not for me. It's not every day, it's not every week that I'm able to afford four new books and I'm happy this way. I hope you enjoyed coming along on this little bookshop crawl in South East London. I know it wasn't that of a big bookshop crawl uh, but we still managed to go to four different places and I hope you managed to discover four new places that maybe you'd never heard of. Uh, they are my probably the closest bookshops uh, to where I currently live and I really like every single one of them, so please do support them if you're in the area and I'll catch you in the next vlog. In the meantime, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, a thumbs down if you didn't, let me know why you didn't like this vlog and if you've read any of the books I bought, let me know and let me know what you thought. Thank you. Goodbye.